Hi everybody, Susan here with the Sacramento History Museum. And today we are coming to you live from the Oak Park neighborhood in Sacramento. Uh, we're gonna just pan around for a second, make sure that my volume is working and that people can hear me. <laughs> so if you can hear me, give a, give a thumbs up so we know that we can keep going. But we are at the Oak Park, or the McClatchy Park actually, uh, entrance right here. It's kind of a, um, I would say the most well-known entrance because it has a sign. It's not the only one by uh, a big shot, but uh, if you look at old pictures and, and photos of Oak Park, this is kind of an iconic one that often shows up. So here, right outside of McClatchy Park, uh, I wanted to say that we're doing these neighborhood walks for this month and next month and I had just an amazing time researching Oak Park as a neighborhood to talk about and I think we're going to revisit this because there is so much with this neighborhood that we could have talked about just Oak Park and filled up these months with with information so we'll probably be revisiting some of these because I have I have page after page after page here of information and I had to cut it down <laughs> so otherwise I'm gonna be talking for three hours to you so what I'm giving you right now is an overview I'll try and go into depth on some things but just know that all the stories I'm telling you there's more to the story and maybe we'll get back to these and be able to tell you a much more in-depth one so for example looking at the McClatchy Park here it used to be home to an amusement park called Joyland and that's where I wanted to sort of start this talk is this uh, amusement park so um, before it was Joyland it was still an amusement park it had um, like a zoo in it and just some animals and whatnot it was actually owned by PG and it was inside of the park um, and it was in 1889 that that's when it sort of uh, began now it sort of fell apart over time or fell into disrepair until about 1911 or so um, Oak Park as a suburb or as a um, neighborhood actually was annexed by Sacramento so it became part of the city and we'll talk more about what, ha what why that happened um, in just a minute but in 1911 PG&E basically told the city of Sacramento do you want to buy this from us we can't we aren't putting the money into it essentially that it needs and we don't have it do you want to buy it and the city of Sacramento didn't have the money at the time so the Ingersoll family actually purchased the park and so it was in private hands still and what they did was they made it into much more of an amusement park and they named it Joy Land, which is what a lot of people know it as. So that didn't happen until 1913 or so when it became Joyland. And what they did was they put a fence around it and they charged admission and it became a real amusement park with a roller coaster, with a zoo, with a skating rink, with a pool, just all sorts of things. I have a picture here actually um, that I thought was funny. It's probably not like the best picture that there's ever been of Joyland. But you can see in the um, background here is the roller coaster and in more of the foreground there are ostriches and i just thought that was really funny uh, yes there was a zoo <laughs> now um joyland brought people from all over sacramento to come here and businesses were booming at the time and they had just huge visitorship in 1920. Unfortunately, in 1920, what happened was a terrible fire. And so a lot of the structures that were part of Joyland, they, they burned. They never officially closed their doors, Joyland did. They tried to put some money into it and rebuild it, but they just were never as successful as they had been. So that happened in 1920, I believe, yeah, 20. And um, in 1927, it had really fallen into disrepair. People kind of stopped coming to it, but there's competition. Um, across the way over there was William Land Park that was becoming more popular. So um, Joyland never really came back to its full splendor. So the park here was actually purchased by the McClatchy family and gifted to the city of Sacramento. So Sacramento finally had the park. And um, part of the, um, the gift, I guess, was naming it McClatchy Park. So that's why it got its name. Now, I have to say, I love this neighborhood. We've been walking in it for just about 10-ish minutes beforehand, and there's music and there's people, and it just really feels like a wonderful neighborhood. So if you get a chance, definitely come down to Oak Park and check it out. Now, as we're walking, I'm gonna give you some history of Oak Park, but I also wanted to point out some of the buildings that are around here. So across the street from us here is called the Muddox Building, or at least that's what it's called now, because it was built by George and I think his brother, um, 
Muddocks, George Muddocks, who was the president of the Oak Park Citizens Bank. So this was a two-story brick building and it was really touted as a fireproof building, which of course at the time was a very big deal. Things needed to be fireproof. It was built in 1915 and it had um, assembly rooms and just, uh, it was a pretty big building uh, for the time. And so it had all sorts of uh, offices and whatnot in it. There was a couple shops on the ground floor, I think three shops. So I don't know if it's too obvious anymore today. Um, but there's a couple infamous things that happened here. We'll walk a little bit this way. Um, the main inf infamous thing was a meeting of the Ku Klux Klan happened in this building. And there's some stories around that where the Sacramento Bee journalists actually like wore plain clothes and like kind of tried to you know, linger around this area to see who was going in and out of the building for that meeting. And they published a list of the city employees' names in their newspaper the day after. And at the time, the city, um, uh, what was his name? Oh, here, I'm sorry, city manager, he was absolutely he did not want any clan activity in Sacramento. He was so against it. So a lot of the people who um, the Sacramento Bee published their names, they got fired. And if you're interested in knowing who the city manager was, that was Clyde Seavey. So kind of interesting. After that, it became a couple other things. It was a Masonic Lodge for a while too. And now you can see it's, uh, I think, a satellite um, building for the University of the Pacific. And it's also just beautiful like looking at it here it is a really beautiful restored building that still stands here in oak park so it's pretty cool so we're going to keep walking i'm going to give you a little bit of history of oak park now it was farmland up until 1889 when edwin Elsip, edwin L. Sip. He actually bought the land from uh, various farmers and he had a vision that he wanted to create affordable housing. He wanted this to be a space that people could live in, afford to live in, and make it kind of a working class neighborhood for um, people who probably worked in Sacramento. But it was not part of Sacramento. It was its own neighborhood and that was really how he tried to sell it, right? So he had bought a full page um, advertisement in the Sacramento Daily Union at the time and here I'll stop so you can see it because this is really it's just so good I, I love this so you can see here um, this street is called Sacramento Avenue today we call it Broadway so kind of interesting <laughs> um, but in it here one of the big you know no city taxes no city taxes <laughs> so I think that's that's just great where he's like this is this is the up-and-coming place and in it he also calls it Oak Park will be made the Eden of California so that's the nickname for Oak Park is the Eden of California and I just love that I think it's great and it was farmland <clears throat> before and so they also said that the soil is particularly adapted for cultivation of semi-tropical fruits and the choicest plants of the floral world and like, it has all that kind of floral language within this advertisement and it attracted buyers from all over california actually to come and buy lots here now these lots weren't actually that successful for a couple of years and there's some reasons for that but the main reason was that um the the there was a streetcar that was built on Sacramento Avenue, now Broadway, and that really allowed people to get to downtown Sacramento, to Oak Park, back and forth. And that's when the buildings and the people really started to come because it was all about transportation. It's hard to get around. It was first horse-drawn carriages, and then it became like a, a, an actual streetcar electric um, uh, transportation hub. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, now, as we keep going, you'll notice uh, that a lot of these buildings have been changed over time so what you're seeing isn't necessarily the original building that was here and there's a lot of reasons for that too we're going to talk about the revitalization of oak park and um you know how that all came through so kind of enjoy the scenery it's just a beautiful you know fall day but edwin elsip too if you're ever interested in learning a little bit more about him he's quite a character in sacramento's history obviously he was um a developer but he also oops here i wanted to see if i had a picture of him oh no i forgot i left the picture sorry but 
I, I think that he wasn't necessarily very good at his job all the time because in the late 1890s, there was all these um, newspaper articles that were, the headline was, Edwin Elsop has disappeared. Where is he? You know, he's missing. And he sent his wife all these bonds and these stocks and whatnot, and now he's gone. And so I, I think that maybe he got into a little bit of trouble, but uh, I did some ancestry search on him and he didn't die until 1915 and he's buried in the city cemetery. So I, that's quite a bit of time to like linger around it in secret. So I'm not sure what all the scandal was there, but it sounds like it's quite an interesting story. So if anybody else wants to learn a little bit more about Edwin Alsip, please let us know. I would love to learn more about that. Or maybe we'll do one of these on him or on like development or development uh, agencies at that time. Now we're coming up on another one of my favorite buildings here. It's called the Guild Theater. I don't know if you can see it yet. We'll keep walking. Now the Guild Theater was actually first known as the, whoop, the Victor Theater. The, the leaves are falling, oh, it's just great. As um, Victor Theater. So here, maybe should we linger here? Is that a good shot? Okay. So it was also constructed in 1915. 1915 was clearly a boom for this area. And this is kind of like the historic area, I guess, that we're, or district that we're kind of walking through in Oak Park. It was built um, by Joseph Lewis. And that name will come up again in a little bit. Now, Joseph Lewis built it. He had a couple other buildings around here that he also built, but Oak Park was known as like a theater district. People came from downtown Sacramento to attend the theater here. And Victor Theater, now Guild Theater, was the biggest of all the theaters that were down here. And so it had all these vaudeville shows and um, it, it brought in like the latest, you know, movie flicks and everything. And it changed over time. It did, uh, and I think the, the 70s are here. Hold on, I don't have to guess, I wrote it down. Uh, so it became the Guild Theater in the 1960s, it looks like, and then in the 70s, I was right, it was, um, uh, or I'm sorry, no, it was in the 60s that it had the best in foreign films, so people would come to actually see foreign films here at this theater, and then it was in the 70s that it started to change, it became a religious revival center, it became um, a couple other things too, and then it was empty for a while, and that's kind of what happened during that time period, the 70s, the 80s, even the 90s, Oak Park went through an economic depression for the area, and a lot of these like big, bigger buildings, they just um, they went empty and they went uh, empty for a while. So this one was um, redeveloped or restored, I guess, to its former look. And I mean, if you look at it, it really is just so beautiful. It's got this amazing mural on the side of it that was part of wide open walls, um, and it was helped uh, to be revitalized by uh, a group called Saint Hope. And you can kind of see it in the alley here. There's something that says Saint Hope. And, and like, I think this whole block was maybe um, held, or revitalized by that or redeveloped by that. So let's talk about Saint Hope for a second here before we continue to move on. Again, I have just page after page. I can go into great detail and it really deserves it too, but um, hopefully we'll have more time to do that in later weeks too. Um, so, St. Hope uh, came in, it, it's a, a group that was actually started by Kevin Johnson, who's like a Phoenix Suns um, uh, basketball player, but he also lived in, in Sacramento, and he started St. Hope as originally an after-school program, and what he did was, um, or, and, and it grew, and so what, what it means for Oak Park was it became like this restoration project for the historic district, and for the school, and just for, you know, some of the, the social um, uh, programs, I guess, in Oak Park. Now, um, so this one uh, restored this building, the Guild Theater, and it also was meant to like revitalize the downtown area and get people, get more businesses to come back here. And it's been really important ever since. I think this one was restored in 2003. And so it's been really important ever since. Now we're gonna keep walking, we're gonna cross the street, so bear with us, because we need to safely cross the street <laughs> as we walk and talk. Um, and then we'll end over there looking at some of the other really beautiful businesses. Um, but you know, this, restoration, this revitalization, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't come at, um, there's a lot of different opinions about it, right? So what happened in Oak Park was after Joyland went out in the 1920s, in 1950s, the highway went in. Well, the highway went in at the cost of people's homes, right? So they raised all of these homes to 
to the ground and um, and they put in a highway that literally separated Oak Park from Curtis Park, from Land Park, from these kind of up and coming neighborhoods. Okay, we're gonna safely cross. And you know, they just cut it off. And then in the 1960s, keep walking. All right, we are safely across. In the 1960s, what had also been a big pull for people to come down to Oak Park was the California State Fair, which um, two weeks ago we talked about the original State Fair lands, which was up in like Boulevard Park and New Era Park area. And then it was moved here to Oak Park. And then um, <laughs> it got moved to its, its final place where it is now up uh, by Cal Expo up there. So the downturn, the whole area was cut off from the rest of Sacramento and parts of it were really difficult to um, purchase houses after World War II, for example, where there had been a housing like crash because they couldn't like, you know, build houses and, and whatnot during that time, it became a huge issue. And so this whole area had to, uh, went into extreme, you know, economic problems. And that's kind of what happened in the 70s and the 80s and then the 90s, they started these revitalization projects. Well, by any other name, it could be called gentrification, where you have groups coming in to revitalize, but then there's redevelopers that come in and you know buy up these kind of cheap houses and they push the people that call Oak Park their home out because they can't afford it anymore. And I would say it's even gotten worse in the last five years, the last one year, <laughs> where it's, um, it's been really difficult to, um, uh, to afford, you know, like on a living wage here in this area to live here as well. And you can kind of see that we've got on this side, these um, early buildings that were restored or these buildings that were restored early in the revitalization process. And then it changed over time. We have these old, beautiful buildings that have been turned into coffee shops and um, theaters and, and bookstores. And then on the other side of the street, we have new construction. And you gotta wonder, you know, well, what was there? What <laughs> wasn't restored? So on the corner here, though, we can walk a little bit further. Oh, I have a D harmonica. <laughs> I love this building. It's, it's it's iconic to Oak Park. It's obviously in the neoclassical style, and I mean, it's like really imposing, isn't it? It's a bank, and originally, it was a bank, believe it or not. So it was actually the. Let me get the bank's name right. Oak Park branch of the Sacramento Bank. And it was actually a bank that um, if they put out loans, there's gonna be a fire truck passing by in just a moment. Ooh, that was loud. <laughs> um, so the loans that th that particular bank gave out was actually to people that had to promise to put that money into the neighborhood to um, help with neighborhood projects in the, in the local kind of uh, things around here. Now that changed over time. It was a bank for a really long time. And in the 1930s, it was bought or it was used as a bank for Bank of America. Actually, I actually have a picture of it, I think, of when it was a Bank for America bank. Yep, Bank of America bank. You can tell not much changed. <laughs> the thought is very much the same, the sod is. So um, yeah, and um, then it was Bank of America for 30 years, and then it was actually um, an Afro-American history museum for a little bit, and uh, a couple other things, and then eventually it became a bank again, and now it's um, US Bank, so I don't know, that's kind of cool. Um, so here, let's keep walking down here. Oh, also I should mention that building is one of two buildings that are actually on the National Register for our Historic Buildings in the Oak Park District. The other is the um, firehouse, is the old firehouse, and I think that's a block down. We're not going to make it there today, but that's okay. You got to see one of them. So you can come on down after this and check out Oak Park for yourself. Um, and then we wanted to end here uh, with this incredibly beautiful Queen Anne style home behind us. This was the home of Joseph Lewis. And perhaps you remember his name from the Guild Theater. He was the one who owned the Lewis buildings and one of them was the uh, Guild Theater at the time, the Victor Theater. So this was his home. Uh, it was built in 1915, I think actually, yeah. 1912, even earlier, see? 
1912 was when he built this home. Um, unfortunately, Lewis died in a car crash in 1920, but his family lived here for a little bit longer. And then after his family moved on, which was, you know, late 1920s, it wasn't for too much longer, it was bought by the Furtado family, Furtado family, who I believe owned the building next to it, to the house, or the house next to it too, but I need to double check that. I think I read that in one place and I never got to go back to, um, to see it but we wanted to you know just show this off this is pretty uncommon i would say for the homes in oak park it's a big one right and during the 60s the 70s these kind of homes became multiple homes or they were ended up being um you know broken up into multiple homes where people would rent and then other houses were kind of built around here but this type of home is kind of rare but it's it's really beautiful to, to look at and it's this right here in oak park so i want to thank you all for joining us on this neighborhood walk so that we could um look at some of the beautiful buildings in the neighborhood itself in Oak Park. It's one of the neighborhoods in Sacramento that is going through huge changes and um, for, for better or for worse, right? It's going through all sorts of changes right now and it's just really a, an interesting place to walk around and take a walk and like see the neighborhood. So thank you for joining us.